any product, medical product that's going on the Chinese market must be registered with the China Food and Drug Administration, which we call it CFDA all the time. Uh, but the re prerequisite of getting CFDA registration is the home country regulatory approval. For the Canadian companies, it would be a Health Canada product license uh, or if the product is exempt from the regulatory approval. The CFDA regulate product based on uh, product classification, class 1, 2, 3. Class 1 as the least risky and the easiest control, and class 3 as the most risky and highest control. Uh, based on the classification, registration requirements is differently as well. Um, but then Chinese classification system is different from EU or Health Canada or, or FDAs. Uh, we should not just assume that class 1 device in Canada is automatically a class 1 in China. We really need to go in and see what, how as CFDA is looking at the product and then we apply the right uh, classification to it. Uh, in fact, the CFDA is more conservative in assigning classifications. Uh, in China, there are more products that are class 3 uh, and 2 than class 1s. Uh, but there are some times when we, when the companies have a new product that they do not find a, you know, suitable classification in the existing CFDA uh, system. Uh, there's a process that we can apply for uh, classification uh, through CFDA agencies. And but however, that process takes about six months or more. So that takes a you know big chunk of your time. So there's a lot of decisions you have to make and say, do we want to go that route to apply? Or do I look at what we have available and, and go that route or what that process pros and cons? So there are a lot of strategy actually. From our company, I do talk with clients extensively about their product, their application, uh, their classification in the US or EU or Health Canada. And, and then we will see how the China matches this. Do, is it an exact match or is it an almost match or is it really contradiction? Uh, and, and those are the issues that you handle prior to submission. Um, and, but this is the only way that you can go in with a confidence that I do have the right classification, I do have the right requirements, uh, because there are a lot of other issues as soon as we get in uh, to the submission. But, but if the classification is wrong, your submission get kicked out of CFDA right away. You start from zero again, so you definitely don't want to make that mistake. Class one as the simplest, least risky product uh, in China has been relaxed by CFDA, uh, not requiring a lengthy registration, but just the documentation. So what we do is we prepare a certain set of documents to provide product information and all the technical docu document and just to file it. Typically class one device registration can be done within two or three months. Uh, if there's no any other major issues with it. Class 1 product filing also does not require CFDA registration fee and it does not have expiration date so there's no renewals so there's a lot of advantage in having the class 1 device in your product mix. For class 2 and 3 products however the registration process is a lot lengthy and costly. Class 2 and 3 products require uh, product testing in China. Uh, those testing have to be done at CFDA authorized testing centers. Uh, the purpose of the testing is to validate product safety and effectiveness and as well as performance. So the testing can be pretty lengthy, sometimes two to three months, and if there's issues during testing, it can be four to five months. Uh, and there's extensive discussions between the testing, testing engineers and the manufacturers. That's one piece of the uh, process before submission. Another activity that needs to happen before submission is preparing the submission documents. Typically, the submission documents are pretty much involved. Uh, there are a lot of documents on the technical side, um, on the product research information and technical specification validations, and as well as clinical evidence and clinical evaluations. And also at the end, uh, we need to provide our, a lot of uh, uh, validation or promised documents to CFDA saying all documents is, are accurate. So there, there's a big binder of uh, you know quite a few documents that we submitted to, to CFDA. 
uh, every time. And this binder get when it gets admitted into CFDA will get into the review process. Uh, the review process is as well pretty lengthy. For class two product, CFDA's minimum review time is 60 business days. And for, not, for class three medical device is um, 90 business days. After the third, first period of review, CFDA will come back with uh, certain questions and then we will gather and prepare more information and material and submit it back to CFDA for additional review. So you can see that the entire uh, review time can be as long as uh, six months or over a year. We just uh, talked about class one device, which is sort of cheap, but for class two and three product is an entirely different story. So the testing by itself is a big investment. At the, but then besides that, the CFDA also charge uh, registration fee for each submission. For class two submission, the CFDA registration fee is roughly 35,000 US dollars. Uh, but for class three device is uh, about $52,000. So you can see that there's a big chunk of money that needs to be allocated to the China project. Uh, so this is also why that I talked about the pre-registration planning is so vital because any missteps in the process that you got to redo, then there's additional time and money. Since the release of uh, the new regulation in 2014, clinical trial has become a very hot topic in the regulatory world. Uh, many companies are very aware and concerned with this requirements. Uh, from CFDA's perspective, their uh, objective is to make sure the products are safe and effective. Um, unfortunately, in the past, there have been a lot of issues with uh, product on the market. So, understandably, the CFDA is quite conservative and wants to plug that hole. But then at the same time, though, uh, they are also putting into uh, some stringent requirements, which may be a little bit overreach uh, comparing with, uh, with the rest of the world in uh, clinical evaluation. For class three product and class two product, uh, if the device does not have a predicate device, meaning similar product on the market or approved in the market already, uh, the company may have to consider in China clinical trial. Uh, but this is not for every product. CFDA does have a clinical exemption list. Uh, in September this year, CFDA has just released a second batch of um, uh, exemption list, uh, which are class two and three products. So everybody who will go into the registration process, this is another due diligence that we have to do is see whether the product falls into that uh, list or not. And if not, how you remedy that gap. The exemption list um, uh, at the same time was also being revamped. I know that companies are very concerned about this and saying, if I have to go into China, uh, with a, a product already approved, and is there any other alternative? Uh, and there are. Um, I wouldn't say that CFDA's regulation is etched in stone. Regulation in China is like the rest of the world, is keep on evolving, even though CFDA may lag a little bit behind, but they are really in the same direction. So we, we just have to hope that uh, things will get a little easier. But however, if you are uh, required to do clinic trial, um, you need to really get familiar with the CFDA regulations on clinical trial. Uh, one should not just contact a hospital and say, I can start a trial because I have a protocol, because CFDA have a strict regulation on clinical trial. And in recent months, also the clinical trial is the top uh, surveillance uh, target for CFDA. Also based on product risk category, there, have, there are requirements for protocol to be to be approved by CFDA. If your protocol does not need to be pre-approved by CFDA, at least that protocol needs to be filed with a local provincial FDA office. For example, if you're doing a, a trial with a hospital in Beijing and in Shanghai, your trial protocol needs to be filed with both Beijing and Shanghai uh, Food and Drug Administration. Uh, you cannot just go in and get started. Uh, and of course, every hospital, if they are experienced with clinical trials, they also have IRB, then you need to go into, uh, you need to get ethical committee approval and all the other requirements. These requirements have to be complied. Otherwise, the trial report is not going to be admissible. 
to CFDA and registration. 